Overly strict parenting can raise children to display defiant behaviors, hyperactivity, aggression, and antisocial patterns. Studies show that strict parenting produces children who are more likely to act out and behave worse than others. Today, we will be discussing the case of Cameron Rogers, a 22-year-old Canadian who murdered his adoptive parents in a fit of rage for no obvious reason. However, there are speculations as to why he carried out the crime. For today's case, we're going to Canada, specifically the city of Ottawa. Ottawa is the capital city of the province Ontario and is located on the south bank of the Ottawa River in the eastern portion of southern Ontario. This is where Cameron Rogers lived with his adoptive parents. Cameron's father, Dave Rogers, started off his adult life studying journalism and political science at Carleton University in Ottawa. Soon after graduation, he took a job as a reporter at the Ottawa Citizen, where he continued his career for 37 years, before leaving his job in 2010. Cameron's mother, Meryl Rogers, grew up in an Air Force family and attended different high schools in France, Regina, Moose Jaw, and Germany, before finally graduating from Brookfield High School in Ottawa. She earned her degree in linguistics from the University of Ottawa and immediately started her career working for the federal government. She retired from her career in public service in 2012 after a long 35 years. Dave and Merrill got married in 1982 and enjoyed doing everything together, including cycling, traveling, skiing, and gardening. In 1994, Cameron Rogers would be born and adopted into the Rogers family as an infant. Both Dave and Merrill were thrilled to adopt Cameron as they had been wanting a family desperately for many years and he soon became the center of their lives. Cameron was described by neighbors and family friends as a loner. Neighbors said they often saw Cameron kicking a soccer ball or riding his bike by himself. Neighbors also mentioned that they had believed the boy suffered from some sort of mental disorder, but the Rogers never discussed it openly. During the trial, the defense claimed that he did have autism. The neighbors mentioned that the Rogers were concerned about their son's future and were thinking of how to get him into some sort of post-secondary school, but it wasn't clear whether Cameron wanted to go or if his parents were forcing him. Everyone thought the Rogers family was doing fine, until one day in 2016. On November 20th, 2016, Cameron stated that he sat in his family's kitchen for 50 minutes to deliberate if he was going to kill his parents. Once he decided he was going to commit the murders, he went into the garage and grabbed a wooden sword. As soon as he walked into the house, he hit his mother in the back of the head, and then hit her in the face. He also stabbed her in the neck and back. Dave Rogers heard his wife scream and ran into the kitchen, only to be greeted by his son holding a knife. Cameron lunged at Dave with the knife and eventually stabbed his father in the back with enough force that he punctured his lung. Dave died quickly from blood loss and his punctured lung. However, his mother laid on the floor dying for several hours after the attack. Soon after attacking his parents, Cameron ran into his bedroom and stayed in his room until the next day. The next day, Cameron stuffed his father's body in a suitcase and covered his mother in a tarp. He then dumped their bodies in a two-foot opening between their backyard shed and their fence. Cameron remained in the house for a week, cleaning up the scene and making plans to flee Canada. The neighbors also mentioned that they were curious why the family had been so quiet around that time. He made his way by bus to the border of Canada and the United States, where he was soon denied entry by the border guard because he didn't have a visa to stay. He then took a bus back to Montreal. Once arriving in Montreal, he broke into a vacant building and attempted to sleep. After sleeping, he decided to call 911 and report the murders. We will now listen to the audio from the 911 call. November 28, 2016, 9.15 and 25 seconds p.m. I would like to confess to a murder. Okay. Well, so where are you? I actually, um, 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 I'm on a street, mm -hmm. um, um, in Montreal. 
Um, I don't know where that street is. Well, you need, you need to know if you want me to send somebody. Yeah, that's true. That's true, eh? Um, well, I'm near a parking garage. Um, 1731 Mikado. Does that work? Mm, what's the name of the street? Mikado? How do you spell it? Um, M-I-K-A-D-O. It doesn't exist, sir. Oh, well, I just read a sign on the, on the house. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go up to the, 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 the corner of the street to see the street name. And, uh, who, who did you kill? Uh, my mom and dad. Okay. What do they, uh, what do they live? They live in Ottawa. Hey, what's your name? My name is Cameron. Cameron. Cameron Rogers. How old are you? I'm 20, 22. 22. Mm. Uh, oh, here, here's the street. Um, Ontario mm-hmm. and Savoie. Okay. Are you gonna stay on the corner? Yes, sir. Okay. I will stay. On oh, the what are you wearing? Uh, the the clothing. Oh, I'm wearing an orange, um, puffy coat and orange mitts with jeans. Okay. So uh, orange coat, and you're 22. Okay. Yes, uh, and I have a hoodie on. A hood, a hood. Okay, okay. What color do you have? What? The, your your shirt is what color? Oh, oh well, the shirt is orange and the hoodie is blue. Okay, I'll send somebody to go and talk to you and just uh, see what's going on, okay? Thank you. Okay, bye. He was soon picked up by the police and brought into the police station where he was interrogated for an hour. The following is the edited footage of his interrogation. Do you understand that you're under arrest right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what do you believe you're under arrest for? Killing my parents. Okay. So that's called, it's first degree murder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you want to talk to a lawyer again? No. No? It's, it's all sorted out uh, okay. so far. I already talked to one. I, I, can't, I, I don't want to like, you know, talk to another one. I, I don't see why I'd have to. How have you been treated so far by the officers here? Well, they're not mean, and they're okay. not nice. I mean, they're just neutral. And what do you mean by neutral? Like, what, what, well, how? I mean, well, well, I mean, they're not nice and they're not mean. I mean, okay. like, they're just, they're just fine. They're just fine. Yeah. Okay. So it would be nice to have some toilet paper. I'm 22. You're 22. Oh, yeah. Okay. And what have are you in school? Or I, I I was in school. Okay. What were you studying? Uh, electromechanical engineering technology. No, uh, electromechanical engineering robotics technician. And how long have you been studying that? Um, I was in that for the first year this year, but I came out of another one from the, like for the past two years. I was in uh, engi- uh, um, I was in mechanical engineering technol technology, but then I changed. I didn't want that degree. No. So why were you taking it? Because my parents told told me to take it. Were you enjoying your schooling? No. That must have been hard. Yes. Yeah. All right. And where were you studying? Algonquin. At Algonquin? You're tired? Yeah. Am I boring no. you already? No. What did you do when you weren't in school? If I wasn't in class, I was studying. And if I wasn't studying, then I was at home helping around the house. You lived with your parents? Anybody else? No? Okay. I understand you were adopted, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And how how was that? How did that go with your parents? It went well. It went well, yeah, good. Now, who's the closest person to you, would you say? Mm, my dad. Your dad, yeah, okay. All right. And do you have any friends or anything? I have friends at uh, at school. Okay. Um, that I know from school and that I know from past jobs. Okay, all right. So what's been going on in your life then? How have things been going for you? Like, in what way? In what way? Like, were you happy with the way things were going? Or? Uh, I, I don't know if I was happy with how I was going with school because I was doing a pro a program that I didn't like. Right, yeah, I and, understand. And, and also, um, I wasn't really being able to get a job because my parents would insist that uh, I would have to work for them around the house. Okay, and how'd that make you feel? Not good. Not good, yeah. So they just wanted you working at the house. Yeah. And okay. I wouldn't actually get money because they would just say that they'd owe me money. So I actually didn't have any money. 
Oh, that must have been hard. Yes. So how did you manage then, like if you wanted to go out or if you wanted to do something? Uh, well, uh, if I would want to use money, they would have to approve of it. All right. What kind of work were you doing around the house? Gardening and... How did you end up here in Montreal? I was told by uh, per the person I called on the phone, uh, not the lawyer, but the one that's supposed to help me, that I shouldn't okay. answer okay. questions. Okay, that's and, all right. And, and I'm feeling that that answer is not one I should answer. Is it your parents that were pushing you and you're shaking no? Well, I'm not saying it's not my parents' fault, but I'm I'm not saying it's not my fault. I mean, right. I mean, I shouldn't have done it. I don't want to place the blame, so like I can't really say that like my parents were putting pressure, but they were. But I mean, that's yeah. no account for you know doing the deed. What I'm hearing from you is that you were under a lot of pressure. And that's how you chose to, to deal with it. But there's something that caused you to want to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah, and there's something that caused you to feel that that's the solution that you needed to do. I guess. Other than um, your parents putting pressure on you with school and not wanting you to work, what else were they were they doing that was adding to this stress? Other than no money and having to go into a program for three years that I didn't want to go into. Um, I, I, I don't know like what else there would be. Mm -hmm. like, I can't think of anything. I, I might have felt or I might have thought at the time that I was lonely but then mm -hmm. after I killed them I didn't really feel lonely. Well I felt more lonely because anyway that's yeah. irrelevant but I mean mm -hmm. realized that it was the wrong choice but anyway. Yeah. yeah. What did you feel you would accomplish by by killing them? Mm, nothing. Nothing eh? Okay. And what what caused you to, to just do this? Like it was I guess the spur of the moment. How did you do it? one or two knives and, and, and a stick. And where did you kill them? In our kitchen. What was going on right before you killed them? Uh, my mom was doing something else in the kitchen. Okay. And my dad was somewhere else in the house. How did they get to the outside? I, I, I put them there. Like I was, I, I, I didn't want like my mom's brothers or any friends to come and see them like that. Okay. And how did you get them out to the back? I had to, uh, uh, well, I, I, I dragged my mom in a tarp. Okay. And then I put my dad in a suitcase okay. and then pulled him out. Did you have to do anything to get him into the suitcase? Or? Well, it wasn't like a perfect fit. Like, I didn't, like, make him, like, fit. And how long did you remain in the house after the... A week. And where were they for that one week? For a day, they were wherever they got killed. After that, um, was spent taking them out to the backyard and then cleaning up a little bit. Okay. So it wasn't, you know, blood all over the place. For, for sure, yeah. Because you didn't want anybody, any family members mm. to see that. What room had to be cleaned up? The kitchen. I think it was two knives. Uh, um, in a plastic bag with the stick that had broken so I put those in the plastic bag and I put it in the black box which is in the garage. What did you do then for that whole week then in the house? Stayed in my room Okay. because uh, what I was mostly going to run away mm -hmm. from Ottawa hoping to go to the US but since that didn't work out I got stuck in Montreal and then that's when I called. How come you weren't able to get into the U.S.? Well, you need some kind of like, not like a ticket, but like you, uh, to stay there, you need some kind of visa. I see. You know, and you know, I didn't have that, so you know, I'd have to lie and that, that just wouldn't work. Do you remember what day of the week this was that this happened to your parents? Sunday. It was a Sunday at about what time? 11 in the morning. In the morning. Did somebody call you to find out where they were? Two of her brothers. I was scared, so I said that they had the flu. Did anybody come over in the uh, those eight days? We have friends from church and they came over the next Sunday and I said the same thing. They were at the house? 
Yeah, they came over to the house. Oh, okay, all right. So where did did they ask you where the where your parents were? I said that they had the flu. What did you tell them? As I told them that they were, um, you know, sleeping in their room, oh. like when in the with the flu. I, I I didn't really give that. I, all I said was that they had the flu and that they were resting and that's. So we're just gonna try to figure. How did you get to Montreal? I took the train. Oh, you took the train. Okay, and then how did you get from your house to which train station did you go to? Tremblay. Tremblay Road. Okay. And how did you get there? I drove. You drove whose vehicle? My mom's. Your mom's? Which vehicle is that? It's the van. The van? Okay. And um, why didn't you just drive to Montreal? Well, I have to pay for gas. And I mean, I probably could have, but I mean, if I had to pay for more gas, I wouldn't really be able to pay for more gas. Right. Okay. So you then took the train to Montreal? Yeah. And when did you arrive in Montreal? At 8.30 on Monday. 8.30 in the morning or in the evening? In the morning. In the morning, okay. Yeah. And how did you pay for your train ticket? With some money. Okay, and where did you get that money? From their purse. From your mom or from your dad's uh, wallet? I think it was from my... I think it was from both. From both? How much money were you able to get, uh, get from there? 140. 140, okay. So you took the train to Montreal, and then what did you do once you arrived in Montreal? I bought a ticket to the US. Okay. But it didn't work. And what was your plan in, in going to New York? Somehow survive. Pardon? Somehow survive. Like, I didn't really have, like, a plan. You didn't have a plan, no. eh? No. It was just to get as far away from. Ottawa as I could. Okay, all right. And then when you got turned around, how do you end up downtown Montreal? Well, I had to get back from the border, so I had to take a bus back from the border. Mm -hmm. um, and the bus dropped me off, I guess, at the bus station. I don't know exactly right. where it was, but I and then from there I walked this street that was a bl uh, was was any where where I called. Right. Um was like a block from where I put my bags and that was nearby where the bus station was. And so where did you sleep? Oh, so I didn't you really sleep. You have no, that's right, because we're Tuesday, that's right, because yeah. you arrived yesterday morning. Okay, all right, and what's in the bags? Just clothes. Just clothes, okay. Clothes. Are we gonna find the knife in there or the stick no. or anything or no. any weapons? Well, I have my, my survival kit, um, my camping survival, survival kit, so there is a saw and a Swiss Army knife and a, a, sh a sheath knife. What made you decide to call the police, to call 911? I didn't really have anything else to do, and mm -hmm. I may as well, since it's, I mean, I was, I was feeling down. For sure. You know, yeah. and I was tired, which yeah. made me feel more down. Right, yeah. And I called. Right. And how did you feel after you made the call? Well, I was crying for a long time. For sure, yeah. Felt better, but I mean, I still don't know if it's if it's if it's if it's fixed because, you know, like, I mean, we're discussing. I feel like we're still trying to figure out if I did it or not, and I don't understand. Like, uh, like I thought confessing would mean that I would be like that would be it. You know, we need to understand what, just because somebody tells us they did something, it doesn't mean it happens, right? So that's why when you told Montreal, there's a lot of people say things sometimes that aren't true. This is something that um, wouldn't have gone away. Eventually, you would have had to have dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm noticing a cut on oh, your... Oh, well, that was trying to... to where, left where, hand. Where I put my stuff, I, ha I was trying to get in. Because it was like a rundown place, and I had to okay. get in, so it got got cut. Oh, okay. Did you sustain any injuries while, as a result of what happened to your parents? Yeah. Okay. What? So I know you were cutting melons, and w that was about at eleven o'clock on the Sunday morning. Yeah. What caused you to 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 do that? Like it was something said or no. done or. No, it was literally just a spur of the moment. I, I don't even know. Like, I, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was took me 50 minutes of going back and forth about to do it and then not to do it. Was there, what were the plans that day? The plans was do some studying and then go to the restaurant for the party. For the party, okay. All 
right? And your mom, you said she was in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Okay. And where was your dad? He was somewhere else now, so I don't know exactly. Okay. Can you just explain to me how your dad, did they both, did it both happen in the kitchen? Okay. How does your dad end up in the kitchen? When I did my mom, he came running and then I did him. How long did it take? What do you mean? Like before your mom, like how long did you? Well, my dad didn't take very long, but my mom took a long time. And, and, and it was really hard because she was in pain and, and I wanted it to stop <laughs> and I couldn't make it stop and then I felt so bad because, because she was in pain mm -hmm. and I went for the whole night. And what? <laughs> she, it took the whole night for her to die. I went to my room and, and, and she was still in pain. I couldn't hear Why is it then, after, when you realized she was in pain, why didn't you call 911? Well, well, I knew it was too late. And what do you mean by it was too late? The wounds were too bad. How soon after did you, did you, did you kill your dad? What do you mean how soon after? Well, after you, your mom? Yeah. Yeah? He and came running and then running. that's, that's when it happened. Okay, and what did he say when he came in? Well, he was scared for her. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and then it was quicker okay. for him. Okay. Now, you talked about a stick. Yeah. Who did you use the stick on? I think it was both. On both? And what part of the bodies did you hit them with? I think Sorry, it was the head. The head? Okay. Yeah. Right. The stick broke. The stick broke on who? I don't remember exactly. Okay, all right. And there were two knives involved? Yeah, I and think so. Okay, where did you get the knives? The kitchen. Which knife did you use on which person? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. But I think I remember this. there was a smaller one that was only used on my mom. Okay, all right, okay. And um, do you remember what your mom said to you right before? Mm -hmm. Like before all of this happened? Yeah. No. No? Okay. Was there a conversation going on no. with you and her? No? Okay. Um, have you told anybody else about this? Other than, uh, so you've told the 911 operator in yeah. Montreal, you spoke to the Montreal officers, yeah. we've spoken. Have yeah. you talked to anybody else about it? No? Okay. Um, between the time that you've killed uh, your your parents yeah. and now, have you hurt anybody else? No. No? Okay. So there's no other, you haven't killed anybody no. else and you haven't injured anybody else? No. no? Okay. Um, who were the friends that showed up on the Sunday? They were friends from church. And do you know, what are their names? I don't want to bring them into this. I mean, if I have to, fine, but I, I don't want to bring them. They're nice people. I, do I have to bring them in? What church are they from? The, the Metropolitan Bible Church. Metropolitan mm -hmm. Bible. It's a, we'll probably be able to figure out mm -hmm. who they are. Um, it's up to you if you want to tell me, but we're gonna, we'll be okay. able to figure out who they are. Okay, so yeah, I may as well tell you then. Um, uh, her, uh, there's, there's a, it's a family, there's, um, oh, oh, I know this, um, um, okay, well, I know their daughter, their daughter is called Catherine, because okay. she goes to my school, and her mom, I can't think of it. Okay, all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to figure that out. Um, and Catherine sings in the choir. Okay. If that helps. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, and, and he, yep. the man is sort of French. Okay. I think. Yeah, he's French. <coughs> okay. So you talked to me about <coughs> the area that you cleaned up. What area in the kitchen did you have to clean up? Like in front of, like, the fridge? Like, I mean, like, okay. I, I don't know how to explain if you don't know the house. What did you clean it up with? Um, uh, we have, like, um, 
a like steam thing for tiles. Oh, okay. And I use that. Okay, and where is that now? Um, I left it in the hall. It you left it in the hall. Okay. Yeah. And what other parts of the house did you have to clean up? Just that. Just that. Okay. Now you must have had uh, blood on you. Maybe just on my arms, but then I washed it off. Okay. And where did you wash it off? I guess when I had a shower, it washed off. Okay. And how many showers are there in the house? Three. Three. Okay. And which one did you use? The one upstairs. Generally, is that what's the condition of the house? Is it tidy? Is it? I mean, to to me, a normal house is slightly messy, but when guests come over, it's tidy. So right. I mean, if I were to go into the house now, what condition is that house in? In good condition. It's in good condition. What about in terms of it being? Like it's not guest tidy, but it's okay. it's normal tidy. Okay. Is it possible it's a little messier than normal? Maybe my room, since like I stayed in there during that whole week that I was in the house because I didn't want to go downstairs. Okay. Um, downstairs? In the kitchen. Oh, in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Are there a bunch of drawers open in the house? And is it a little messy? No. No? Except maybe her bed where I, I emptied her purse. But other than that, no, everything was left as it was. So you're cutting melons. And what was your mom doing? She was like uh, doing something, some kind of herb thing. I don't know what it was. It was just, she was grinding herbs or something. So what was going on that morning in the house? I don't know. I mean, like, what was... Did you have an argument with your parents or...? Well, I mean, the whole upstanding, or not upstanding, the whole disagreement about school and work and all that was just hanging. Like, I mean, we've had arguments before. Okay. And heated yelling ones, and I guess just at that time when the cloud broke, I was chopping a melon. And what were you arguing about that day? Like while you were chopping the melon? I, I don't know if I was arguing. At that time I was not arguing. But I, maybe like a day or two before we had been arguing Okay, and it about this, those, those issues. Okay, and anything in particular? So you're talking about school, about The work, work? issue. What was your mom like when she argued with you about it? Well, I, I didn't have a say. And so you're, you're chopping the melon, and is that the knife that was used? I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. And where did you stab her on her? Um, in the back. Actually, wait, I didn't stab her first. I used a stick. First. You used the stick, okay. Yeah. And where did you get the stick? I made it a while back. Okay. And when you say made it, how would you how do you make it? I carved it. Okay, and for what purpose? Okay. I had a lot of time on my hands in the summer. Okay, and what did you were you gonna use that stick for? I don't know. There was no plan when when I when I made it. Where were you keeping that stick? In the garage. In the garage, okay. So how does it end up being in the kitchen that day? I don't know. I was planning. Like, I mean, during those 50 minutes of going back and forth, one of those times I, I thought of using the stick. Okay, on? My mom. Okay, to do what? I don't know. Okay. Do, do I really have to say it? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand it. I'm just, I was a little confused as to how the stick was... Um, in the kitchen, but I understand, so it was in the garage because you were kind of thinking you were back and forth. And uh, what about on your dad, what was used for him? A knife. The knife? Yeah. Okay, all right. There were two knives, right? Mm -hmm. You said, right, okay. And the smaller one, you said you used it on your... Mom only. Right, and then the larger one? On both. On both, all right. Yeah. Okay. I am just going to leave the room for a couple of minutes. I just want to go and check with my partner to see if I've forgotten anything. Sorry there. It's a very noisy building. Noisy, noisy building. Um, just, a, just a few little points. I know that, that the week um, after it happened, you said you stayed at your house. Okay, and where you, st you stayed in your room, you told me. How were you, like, were you eating? Okay, and where did you go to eat? 
I ate in my room, but I had to go downstairs to get the food. Oh, okay. Did you go out at all? No? Okay. Did you make any uh, phone calls or watching TV? No? No? Okay. And where were you sleeping? In my room. You were, sleep you were able to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's what I thought you said. I just wasn't sure about that. Um, in the past, when you've had arguments with your parents, how did that end, those arguments? Like, how would you deal with it? I would watch, like, shows and stuff. Okay. All right. I guess that's, that's the answer. Okay. And, um... Like, I wouldn't win. Okay. Okay. The, the, the argument. Okay. All right. And how'd that make you feel? I don't know, like, not good. Probably, yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever have any, um, did you ever assault them in the past? Out of fear or, uh, not out of fear, but out of anger? No? Okay. All right. And we're just about done. Um, the, 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 the stick you told me is in, it's, where is the stick right now? I know it's broken. It, it, it I, I put, I, I got a, I th I'm pretty sure I got all the pieces and I put it in the bag with the two knives and I put that bag in recycling bin in the garage. And has the recycling bin picked up? No, no I would have had to put that outside. And did you? No. No. Okay, did you go to high school before? And did you graduate? Okay, where did you graduate? Brookfield High School. And then where did you go after high school? Straight to college. Okay. And how were you doing in school, in high school? Well. You were doing well? Yeah. What yeah. type of marks were you getting? Well, some, some were A's, but in, in the B's. Were you in the regular program? Like, when you say that. Like, just a regular, like, was it a, in a special needs class? I or? was part of the special needs, um, okay. but um, I didn't like it. And what was the special needs? Why were you in the special needs because class? Because I have a slight autism. When I'm not on the meds, I have bad coordination, but when I am on the meds, I don't have bad coordination. And how does your um, mind feel when you're not on the meds? Fine. And when you're on the meds? Fine. Well, I have sleep apnea. Maybe snore a oh, little snore? bit. Maybe. Okay. I don't know since I don't really. Okay. All right. Do you sleep? Are you, are you a good sleeper? Yeah. And do you take it regularly? I I I normally do. Okay. Now, when you say normally, when do you not take it? Like right now. Oh, right now. Okay. You know, since I don't have any stuff. When was the last time you missed it, other than right now? Um. Maybe during the summer for a, okay. a, a couple of days. A couple of days. All right. Your dad, where did you, you told me you used the bigger knife on him, right? Yes. Okay. Where on his body did you stab him? Uh, the back. In the back. How many times? I don't remember. Okay, that's that's right. What time of the day did you bring them outside? It wasn't at night, I know that. I wanted to do it at night, but I, I didn't do it at night. It was someone during the day. It was in the backyard, so... I, so that was my next question. How did you get them... Like, where's the kitchen? Is it in the front of the mm -hmm. house or the back of the house? Kitchen is, like, in, in the sort of front area, but um, we have a, a back door that um, leads to kay. a deck that leads to the backyard. Your mom, you said you dragged her on the tarp? Yes. Where in the house or outside did you first put her on the tarp? I put her on the tarp in the kitchen. I brought I the tarp in, yeah. Okay, and where was the tarp? It was outside. Like, I mean, it was like okay. we have a garden, so we have tarps. Do you have any side, like neighbors on either side? Yeah, well, one of them is like never really there, and the other one is also, yeah, like, I mean, I guess they're not, well, I mean, it's not, it's not, like, one is really never really there, and the other one is like there sometimes and not there other times. Okay, were you worried about them seeing you? Yeah. And your dad, how yeah. did you... It was the suitcase. Okay. Like, it was him, like par partially in a suitcase. It wasn't like completely. It was like sticking out. It was hard. And why did you put him in the suitcase? I didn't want to drag him. What were you thinking when you were doing this? Like when I was moving them? No, when you were actually stabbing them and hitting them. I wasn't. I don't remember exactly what I was thinking, but I don't think I was thinking anything. Maybe it was just adra adrenaline or something. I don't think I was feeling actually any anger. Yeah. Okay. Which
which sounds actually really bad. Like, and I think that's that. That's what I was saying. That like it took me like fifty minutes of going back and forth of thinking to do it, and then not thinking I shouldn't do it, and you know, then I, f I finally did it. But it was I didn't I wasn't like out of anger. Like I don't think. So I mean, what was I, the I, don't, I, I don't know. Like it's not that I wasn't doing it for anger, but at the moment when I when I did it, I wasn't feeling really angry. Um, maybe it was just. The fact that it took me like doing the fifth, the fifty minutes of about to do it and then not doing it, and then like I mean like when I say not doing, it, I mean like chickening out, mm -hmm. you know. Why? Why did that? Why did that happen on the Sunday then? Like, what is it that said? I don't know why it happened on the Sunday. I I don't know. I I don't know. Okay, well I know if it was impossible because you'd been thinking on and yeah, off right for yeah, fifty yeah, minutes. So point. yeah, it was impossible. Yeah. Pardon? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. All right. And you don't recall the last argument you had with them? No. All right. Okay. I also have a bad memory, but anyway. Well, yeah, okay. You seem to have provided pretty good memories with everything oh, that, with okay. regards to what happened. So uh, mm. I think I've, I have a good understanding. At the beginning, I told you that you didn't have to talk to me, and, and you did. Yeah. I just wasn't like, supposed to. Well, that's okay, but mm. why, why is it then that you decided to talk to me? Because I I I would did something bad and I want to you know be honest about it and mm -hmm. you know I feel that I should you know get, get in you know in trouble you yeah. know more like finish this feel slightly better but I mean it's not over yet. No, it's not. Um, you're gonna have to remain here in Montreal. In Ottawa, they have to get a warrant to get you back. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, when I call a lawyer, uh. Is there a phone number? The once you get to Ottawa, the Ottawa officers are going to explain that process to you. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go get the officer, and I will also ask them at the same time if they Thank can you. get you some toilet paper. Thank you. Okay, it won't be long. Thanks. Cameron, it's um, I've spoken to the officer. They're going to get you some toilet paper, mm -hmm. okay? Thank and you. Um, yeah, that's no problem. I think I don't think it was it wasn't done on purpose. I think you just happened to end up in a cell without toilet paper. So we're going to bring you out back to the cells, okay? Cameron was originally charged with first degree murder in the slaying of his parents. However, the trial took many emotional twists and turns for everyone involved. Cameron's lawyers planned to mount a defense outlining how Cameron couldn't form the necessary intent because of his autism. This is when the case took its first turn. The day before the trial was going to start, Cameron informed his lawyers that he was essayed by his father and claimed that he was defending himself the day he beat and stabbed him to death. After learning this information, his lawyers requested a mistrial because it had thrown the defense into an impossible situation. The Crown initially had rejected the request. However, once learning about the new information, it became clear that neither side would be able to conclude their case by the original end date. To make matters even more difficult, three of the jurors would not be able to continue serving if the trial had continued a couple of months. Because 10 jurors minimum were required to continue, a mistrial was declared and the jury was discharged. The court was to start up again the following week, where if the Crown were to reject a judge-only trial, it could be another year before a new jury trial would take place. This is when the next turn in the case happened. The first day after starting back up, Cameron admitted that the claim he had made was a complete lie and that his father did not abuse him in any way. His lawyers then filed a plea deal that was accepted. It was decided that much of the evidence that the jury heard during the trial was accepted as fact. He pled guilty to two counts of second-degree murder and admitted to fabricating the story about his father. Cameron will serve two concurrent life sentences and will be eligible for parole at age 44. There are a few interesting cases out there where adult children claim to have murdered their parents because they felt they just didn't have control over their life. But was it just that in this case? Abuse alone rarely is the driving force for an adult to kill a parent because a healthy adult has options a child under 18 does not have. But was Cameron just a healthy adult? 